Well, starting from the top, we have the, the Mark VII helmet, which is a lighter helmet than its predecessor, the Mark VI Alpha, but with the same levels of protection. And that is integrated with um, eye protection, which although it doesn't offer the same level of physical protection as the helmet, it protects a very vulnerable part of the, the face um, and one that would have very poor long-term prognosis if you, you had even quite a small injury. The eye protection is something that has recently been changed for a um, model that doesn't steam up as much as the, the previous one. And then moving back here, we have hearing protection, which is an integrated um, hearing system which allows Harvey to hear what we're saying while we're speaking now, but if a loud noise occurred, it would block out the sound. The next step after all of this is to try and integrate all of this into a single helmet subsystem, um, rather like motorcycle helmets. It won't look like a motorcycle helmet because that would be um, unworkable, um, but something that actually has all of these features um, within the helmet itself or associated with it rather than being different items purchased from different suppliers. One of the key things about all of the equipment um, that we look at is finding out whether the soldiers are actually happy to wear it, whether it's comfortable, whether it integrates well, frankly, whether it looks good as well, because if the soldiers don't want to wear it and aren't confident that it's going to do what they want, then they will find a reason not to wear it. Moving further down, um, the Osprey 4 body armour is extremely popular, but um, it comes with added parts um, around the neck and the, the sleeves which offer greater protection but are probably too burdensome and they're not commonly worn in Afghanistan, although they were in Iraq where soldiers weren't dismounted as often. This is an area that we're working on at the moment to integrate um, protection around the neck that is not as burdensome as the removable collars that Osprey 4 is issued with because soldiers aren't wearing them because they are too burdensome. And then as we work down we're also looking to improve um, the, the sleeves of the U-backs to integrate protection into that. At the moment, there are um, padding um, inserts that can be placed in here. They're basically neoprene, not very comfortable, and aren't offering a great deal of value. What we're looking at is integrating perhaps some sort of um, ballistic material that provides both padding, is reasonably cool and light, um, but also offers ballistic protection to the arms so that there are, are better outcomes um, in the event of the soldier being involved in a ballistic event. Um, integration of all of the various pouches and equipment that is attached around the, the body armour and load carriage and one of the things that concerns us is an awful lot of the weight is being taken up here on the shoulders which is uncomfortable and we know from human factors testing that the best way to carry weight is to distribute it between the shoulders and the hips so we're looking at ways that we can do that so that if soldiers do have to carry heavy loads they can do it as comfortably and as efficiently as they possibly can. And then moving further down, um, although you can't see on uh, uh, Rothman Paris here, um, we have the um, tier one pelvic protection, which just looks like a pair of cycle shorts, but you can just see in there, there is a lightweight um, ballistic protective material. And the development of these was something DSDL was very closely involved with, and the military advisors were very closely uh, supportive of that. And this de was developed on the basis that the soldiers have to be able to wear it. It's no good giving protection against every possible threat, but the soldiers leave it at home. So this came from a human factors perspective. We identified what the soldiers would actually be able to bear in terms of additional thermal and um, weight burden, and then we built the protection to match that. So this is a reverse from the way we normally operate, which is we look at what the threat is, and then we build protection that will defeat that threat, and then we wonder why the soldier can't carry it. So this is a real... Um, plus from the soldier's point of view because it's something that they can wear all the time and it's a, a mark of how important human factors has become in the way we develop things because without human factors this wouldn't have been the success that it has been and this is already improving outcomes for soldiers in a huge way in theatre and we've had numerous letters back from surgeons in theatre expressing their amazement at how effective this has been. And the, the blast pants, as, as they're known, came as a direct result of injuries that were being seen as a result of IEDs on the front line, weren't they? Exactly. And DSTL is um, intimately involved with um, assessing injury patterns um, and evaluating um, what parts of the, the soldier that we can protect and should protect and the nature of the injuries. And one of the things that um, became very apparent was the sorts of protection that we provide here, which is against really large metal fragments that would come off um, you know, traditional military munitions were not the sort of injury patterns that we were seeing in the lower limbs where largely we were seeing smaller fragments. Um, probably we wouldn't be able to stop all of them but if we could stop enough of them that would make cleaning up the wound 
much, much easier and give a much better chance of a long-term uh, quality of life for the soldier who was involved in the explosion. A lot of soldiers on the front line will probably watch this report and think, what has science got to do with me and what I'm doing today? Well, they may think that, but science is influencing everything from their lethality and identifying whether or not having this type of sight or a different type of sight will make them more lethal or the, the type of um, round that the, the weapon is firing, all the way through to the clothing that he wears and the protection. There's science involved at every single level, not just from here at DSDL in Port and Down, but from um, other science agencies, but also from the, the various systems part of DSDL who look at the um, the modelling of, uh, of different types of uh, configurations of um, soldier equipment and identify what the most efficient and effective way is going to be to equip our soldiers in the future. So everything he wears has got some science in it. We'd like there to be more.